Hi, everyone. Before the episode begins, I just want to remind you to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Marlene the Plant Lady and YouTube, Everything Gardening with Marlene Simon. And remember, please, please, please rate and review on iTunes and Spotify. That just helps the podcast get a notice by more people and then more people will become better gardeners. And that's what we all want. So enjoy the episode. Look at that plant. I want you to know that everything was grown in my garden. Don't touch that plant! Is it poisonous? She'll become part of the plant. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Flower Power Garden Hour. I'm your host, Marlene, and this is your June to-do list and a question and answer episode. And so joining me for that is Joe. Um, Joe, say Hello. Hello. I feel like we haven't been putting out a lot of podcasts, and that's probably because we haven't been putting out a lot of podcasts. <laughs> um, that's completely my fault. I just um, haven't taken the time, booked anyone, a lot of gardening, a lot of stuff going on, um, a lot of cat stuff going on. Today we had a sheep issue, as in we don't have sheep, and I went out to the barn and I apparently was in the barn with the sheep for about a good five, ten minutes before I realized there was a sheep underneath the Jeep. Um, I scared the sheep away. You don't get along with sheep. Apparently not. So it was the first day I'd taken off besides a holiday and weekends in seven months. And I was had, you know, to get a lot of stuff done. So, of course, things aren't, you know, I had to go into work for a tiny bit. So technically I didn't even take the full day off. I'm just doing a lot of stuff. And then you work from home. So I run upstairs after I see the sheep and I I startled it awake and then it took off and you were on a call. So I'm like mouthing to you, just read your texts. And as I was texting injured sheep in barn, I'm like, oh, that's a good one. I don't think I've ever had to type that one. No, no, that was a new one for me. But you managed to get a, a collar on it and tie it up. That was good. And then animal control came and very nice lady and you and her lifted it up into the the truck. Yeah. I didn't know they had that big. I thought for sure they were going to have to get like a trailer, but it fit in there. What do you mean a trailer? I didn't realize their, their uh, animal control trucks had space that big for the sheep. I mean, it was a sheep. It's the size of a dog. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good point. That's huh. true. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so I asked her because I'm like, do I ask if it's just going to be put down? And she's like, oh, no, no, no. Well, yeah. But I had one eye, we think, or a very damaged eye. It did have a damaged eye. It looked like it had been sheared recently. Yeah. Not the eye. That sounded awful. You're like, it did no, have the one. Sheep. Yeah, the sheep was sheared. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so that was sheep. Um, just log gardening, 26 cats. Just slide that one in there. Did you really get up to 26? Um, I think I'm, I was at 25, went down. I think I, what, okay, when I get the animals, so apparently, um, this other place yesterday that I work on. was not on, a good day, by the way. Yesterday was not a good day. Well, because you were supposed to be going negative three. Yes. In terms of cat population. And that's what I said. As soon as I was getting By the time one, you got back home, I, it, you were neutral. I would, I would plan, yes, because, um, this other place that I work on every other Sunday, that won't be named, has a new person in charge of engineering who I don't know, and they don't like cats, and there's two fixed ones and a third one. So basically, I'm taking three cats from this other place that won't be named, and I'm very upset about that. Um, Yeah, a lot of cats. Work's been very busy, too. Like I said, I haven't haven't had much time off there. A lot of exciting things going on at work. Um, I keep saying, um, I need to stop that. Um, (laughs) the last 30 seconds have sounded like a bit of a wine fest, I want to say. Dang it. I hate that. Really? A little bit. The sheep included? No. That was a wine fest? Sheep was okay. The cats? No, that was okay. Really? Okay. Because I should be able to whine about cats. It's like, oh my God, I'm working Okay, I know. As soon as I say, I don't have a day. I know. You hate when people bitch and complain about work. So, okay. So I'm not going to. I'm going to tell people what to do now in their garden for June. It's June already. Yet there's a 40% chance of rain tonight, which I'm all for. 
it was getting some heat and then clouds though. came in. Uh, actually, if you've been outside, it's not that hot right now. Well, in my office, it's 110. Yeah, your office just is insane. Okay, so, you know, a few things. can People are like, oh, is it too late to plant? No, uh, definitely not too late to plant your vegetables. You could plant uh, tomatoes, definitely peppers, eggplants, okra, uh, beans, corn, cucumbers. So basically any of your summer veggies you could plant and then some because now is the time to plant your watermelons, your melons, and your pumpkins. And what I mean that is you could either direct sow the seeds or buy plants and plant them in the ground. So pretty much everything goes. It's not too late. Your herbs, standard. But I do want to let people know that you know, you're know you at the store and you're like, oh, I have peppers. I have tomatoes. I'm going to make some, you know, some salsa. Cilantro is a cool season. It fits between late winter and summer in that spot. If you plant it now, chances of it just bolting and not being happy, that's that's pretty high. So you go ahead and plant it. Just don't expect it to do much. And same with some parsley as well, um, of course. But fennel is fine. Or your oregano's butter perennials that's fine because perennials right now pretty much any perennials you do want to watch because the heat is coming i used to have to rule of thumb that i would never plant the end you know past june 1st eh, i've blown that one out the window um if i see something and i'm like okay i could water it in just be aware that a lot of these plants are going to go and look not so happy a lot of times some of the tops come completely die down just soak it there's no magic we know that b1 is m- a myth. There's nothing to add um, that's going to help your plant. It's basically just start with good soil already, water it in, add some mulch on top. I would not plant past mid-June because that consistent temperatures and the plant's going to be really stressed. Um, Some other things in in the garden, vegetable garden, I've seen a lot of questions about people and I talked about asparagus before. Just let your asparagus grow. If your uh, sprouts are thinner than a pencil or it's the first or second year, just let it go. Don't prune anything. They get tall. They get bushy. Root suckers on pretty much anything. Make sure you are, you know, keeping control of those year round, citrus year round, your roses. If you're they're grafted, go ahead and just be aware. If you see something really long, see something come from the ground, cut the suckers off. Uh, look for pests. So far, this has been a really good year, meaning not a lot of pests because it's it was so cold and so wet. It sort of just knocked them down. And I have absolutely, knock on wood, no pests. Not that I ever really have a big problem with pests, but fava beans usually I get like early spring, the black aphids, none. Haven't seen any of those because I think it was so cool. Um, yeah, really, pests aren't a problem. I'm not going to say they're not there. I have had s- certain things in the soil dwelling, like earwigs and sow bugs, I think, are, are eating a few things. Remember, diatonaceous earth for that um, is the best thing to put on the ground for that. But remember, hose blast is your best friend. Don't don't try to do any, you know, I've been getting a few questions about what are these bugs on my roses, and it turns out it they're the... Um, uh, A beetle. We don't have Japanese beetles in California, so they do look like Japanese beetles. Hopalia beetles, that's what I was trying to remember. But hand pick them off. If a beetle, a bug is really large, a spray isn't going to do anything. Maybe hose blast really far, but hand pick them off. So just be aware of, you know, knowing the bug and, and trying to use what works for that. Mulch, can't stress that enough, of course. That is going to keep the moisture in. It's going to make watering in between go longer. It just insulates. Everyone's happier. Plants are happier. Mulch, mulch, mulch. Um, And deadhead your roses. If you're into that, I actually deadheaded my roses for the first time in years because we have a big party coming up in a few weeks. And I'm like, eh, you know, I'll remove the rose hips. Ideally, energy goes into new buds. Plus, it looks a little bit better. Stake your tomatoes. Don't try to put a cage around tomatoes once they're already getting big. That's not fun. Uh, Stake your dahlias if they're coming up. And speaking of tomatoes, there's so much information out there. I think I want to do an episode on, you know, what's, what's a myth, what's real, what do you really need to do? We've taken this poor plant 
and above all other plants. And it's almost like cannabis where there's so much information on how to grow the best. And I look out these tomato fields where there's just, they plop them in the ground and they're growing. And, you know, do you need to prune your tomatoes? No. Epsom salts we know? No, I'm not even getting into that. All the stuffs. Uh, yes. Question from the f- field. Field? Yes. Yes. Okay. The tomato fields. The tomato fields. I agree mm-hmm. that a lot of tomato fields that I see around here are very unkept. Mm-hmm. They seem to be intertwined with a lot of weeds and crap. Yes. But yeah. aren't those all tomatoes that just kind of get picked roughly and used in basically not sold as standalone tomatoes? Yeah, so most of them are canning tomatoes, okay. squishing tomatoes, right. and they're determinate tomatoes, so meaning they get to a certain size, they set a number of fruit, and then they die. And most tomatoes people grow at home are indeterminate ones, so the idea is if you do maybe prune them or stake them, they go, you know, in theory, they could keep going until the frost comes. Um, yeah, so you're talking about the the tomato fields, the bindweed weed is huge. Yeah. In fact, though, if there's so much bindweed, they can't even get the harvesters through. So that's the problem with bindweed. But yeah, it, I was just sort of saying, you know, it's you get this tomato that produces tons and they just flop it into the ground. And here people are like, I'm snipping off Well, every so that's my point. question oh, is. I didn't know you had one. I did. I raised my hand. Oh, sorry. I thought maybe I'd use the bathroom. So no, but I did have to go chase a cat away a few yes, minutes I ago. Heard, yeah. Yeah. Um, commercially grown tomatoes uh-huh. that you buy, uh-huh. right? Standalone tomatoes. Yes. How are those grown? A lot of them are hothouse grown in greenhouses and stuff like that. Hmm. So, I mean, I'm not saying that pruning, like you see for space wise, tomatoes can be um, thinned really close together. Um, but my, and I have no problem with people doing that, but that's usually to allow more light in because you're growing these tomatoes really close together and all the foliage from the other plants are just sort of creating issues. So if you space them out, you could have a full-size tomato and it's fine. Um, yeah, so I'm not saying people can't prune their tomatoes or shouldn't prune your tomatoes if you want to, but I think asking a lot of various tomato growers, have you seen a difference between when you've pruned and haven't pruned? And like me, they're like, no, no difference at all. Some people like the look of that really like right. skinny where you just see the fruit and you don't see the foliage and you, oh know, my you God, want to trellis it on. If you're trellising it on a string because you're trying to minimize space and have more varieties, that's different. I think most people that grow tomatoes, mm-hmm. how many plants do you think they grow? Three. How many do you grow? Oh, nowhere near as many as a lot of people homeowners grow. Uh, tell me how many you grow on a normal year. Okay, this isn't a normal year. Um, I don't know, 20? Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I I'm guess. I'm saying there's yeah. a big discrepancy. Yeah. So when some people have one, maybe two. Yes, yes. Then I think they spend a lot more time on those. That's true. Right? Yeah. I guess it's like kids. If you have one, you spend so much time on it. If you have like five, one, forget about you don't it. even know. No. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what I'm just saying is you don't have to, I get it. I think now people are thinking you have to do all this. So, um, but do stake them because if they, they're indetermined, they get big. You don't want to put a cage on and remember this, we've talked about the cages mm-hmm. you've built and let's see what else. Oh, oh, deep soak your trees. You know, we had a really, really wet winter, which was great. That water got into, you know, deep soaked, but of course we're coming into dry season. Uh, so you do want to deep soak your trees, especially new trees and maybe even established trees once a month. And how to do that is just, you know, ideally you stick a hose on a uh, a ring of drip line that you've placed in there and it's around the outer edges of the leaves and you just deep soak it overnight. So you really want to infrequent deep water um, your trees. So don't forget about them especially redwood trees, they actually need more frequent water because they have more shallow roots. So I recommend more than just once a month for that. And that you could do a sprinkler and that would be a shorter span. You could do maybe like a tw- 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and you could do that like maybe once a week even. Um, 
All right. So that's sort of my to-do list. It's sort of mitigating heat, making sure your irrigation's working, mulching, but you could still plant at the same time, looking for pests. And you can still plant flowers, of course, sunflowers, zinnias, but same thing goes once the heat really comes. I, I, I see your hand. I've been working with a lot of second graders lately and they're just like, oh, maybe she doesn't see my hand, so maybe I'll just shake it in front of her face. Maybe I'll just jump up and down. The more they do that, the more I ignore them. Yes, Joe. So with the very wet winter, mm -hmm. abnormally wet, Yes. have you been seeing any consistent issues popping up that you typically do not see, either from a like a pest standpoint fungus standpoint, anything that's environmentally different? No, that's, Joe, that's a good question. Thank you. Thank you for that question. No, and I actually expected to see more powdery mildew, rust on certain plants that leaf out, um, let's say roses, for instance. I expected to see see more of that because certain things that you're, like tomatoes, you're planting when it's already hot and dry for the most part, they're not going to be affected. But things that made it through the winter that are already susceptible to certain things, no, no problems at all. Um, it seemed like it just getting that deep water, at least for where we're at, having rainwater sort of leach out a lot of salts and, and you know, the water that we use that's high in calcium carbonate actually sort of, I think, flushed some of the stuff out. Um, I expected to see, I think one thing that we saw a lot more of, but it's hard to say because a peach leaf curl um, on a wet year and even with people spraying. And so I think we possibly saw a little bit more peach leaf curl, but it wasn't the, oh my gosh, every single tree is going to have it. Um, so no, fire blight, I haven't seen more of fire blight. Um, which affects pears and roses. So no, uh, really, I mean, least for least for me, I have a friend who works at a vineyard and they haven't seen any extra issues with powdery mildew or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Rain is good. That's my take. We had some late season frost again after uh, there was a slight warm up. Mm-hmm. Have you heard anything about damage to any of the crops that potentially bloomed early? And like they the got almonds because they yeah. got hit. I, I haven't heard. I, we have one little, I mean, we live in an almond orchard, but I haven't looked at them. But um, our one almond that's on our actual yard, it's got almonds. So I don't know if it, it, it the problem that we saw was all the bee boxes were out and there was absolutely no sun and it right. was just rain. So there's the rain knocking the flowers off, but there was no bee activity. It took, I mean, the, the hives we have and trees on our property, they were doing nothing. I thought they vacated until, you know, we got a really warm, sunny day. Then all of a sudden they came out, but the bee boxes, there was no activity during, during bloom time. I mean, it's just possible I didn't see them and they're obviously out there. So I'm sure things got pollinated. But between, yeah, the heavy rains, maybe that weird frost. Mm -hmm. All right. We're ready to answer some questions. Um, not your questions anymore. Okay. Kathy with a C. We are taking our front yard grass out. So what next? Do we put down black fabric? What kind? Anything else we should know? Question. About the question. Okay, yeah. She's taking her grass out. Yes. She's replacing it with something. Yes. Something that potentially requires black fabric down. Do you know what she's replacing it with? Did I miss part of the question? No. Okay, what's she replacing it with? Well, people take their lawns out to put in like drought-tolerant gardens. Got it. Yeah, I mean, it's possible she's doing it for vegetables, but I doubt it. I thought maybe concrete. Oh, wow. Aren't you a cheerful, happy one? <laughs> well, I wasn't sure what she was replacing with. I think with. she would be writing into a concrete podcast. You would think. That's do why I was wondering do... about the black fabric. Joe, didn't you know that I moonlight as a concrete? I never can remember if it's concrete or cement or what's the yeah. difference. So You're definitely not moonlighting. No, that? no. Yeah. Concrete. No. Yeah. No. So, you know, it's even though we got a lot of rain, we're still a drought state, meaning it seems like our new uh, pattern is a couple years of no rain at all and then lots of rain. 
but those years where we don't have rain or even in the summer, why waste why waste water? Um, so yeah, a lot of people remove their lawns and putting in drought tolerant gardens or fully native gardens, but something that's not going to be a lawn because it looks prettier. It's better for pollinators, less water, it's just prettier, more fun. So yeah, she removed the grass already. And if you remember, I did a whole episode on this one with the uh, manager of the Arbor- Arboretum, UC Davis Arboretum, Taylor Lewis. So that was a lot of good information because I think people get overwhelmed with it. So if she's already removed the grass. Few things to think about is how is your soil? Most people assume that their soil is awful and they have to remove it and replace it. And that's not the case. Unless it you had backfill brought in, fill dirt brought in, yeah, it could be compacted, but it's probably just clay and it's not as hard compacted as you think. And once you give it a good soak, wait a few days, dig down into it. Remember, clay soils are great for drought tolerant gardens, meaning they hold moisture. The problem is, is in the winter, they hold too much moisture. So if you're doing things that are really drought tolerant, don't like wet feet, you're going to want to amend that with the red lava fines, not red lava rock, red lava fines. You could add compost, but compost breaks down. This will add volume to your soil. So if you can't afford to raise your soil up, i.e. put um, a retaining wall or a row of rocks, then you will have to remove some soil or just go for the clay. But ideally, then you wouldn't put mounds where some of these more sensitive plants like ceanothus that really need good drainage will go. So that's just one thing to keep in mind is your soil, what to amend with. And then she wants to know about the plastic. So, you know, I'm sure gardeners, you've all moved into a yard or worked in a yard where all of a sudden you're digging down and you've hit like a garbage bag. So it's this black plastic they used to use as weed prevention. It's horrible because then you pull up that and it's like the soil below that is like slick and just completely comp, like smooth and compacted. So now they have this fabric material that allows water and air to go through. So you're not creating such a barrier between the top part and the bottom part, which is awful because when you add compost and amendments, none of that gets into the soil and helps the soil. But I do see the point because oxalis is a horrific weed. Bermuda, bind grass, those are horrific weeds. That's not as simple as just going out and picking a few here and there. And even if you think you got it all, probably didn't all get it all. So yeah, the the gray fabric, just keep it away from the plants. Um, you know, you could use cardboard, but cardboard breaks down. So after a while, even one season, it might be gone. So yeah, use the fabric. And I don't even know the brands. It's just the cloth. Don't use the plastic. Use the cloth weed block. And just keep it away from plants. So for some, and then of course you want to put something on top of it. A lot of people do bark. You could do the mulch, but of course, it's not getting down into the soil. So you just want something to, to cover it. Um, yeah, so the main thing is keep in mind is drainage, soil amendments, and getting making sure that, you know, in the summertime, you could troll the moisture. But in the wintertime, Mother Nature is saying when it, your plant's getting water and if it's getting too much and it's in clay soil, you could have a lot of rot out like ceanothus and some of these more manzanita, some of these more water sensitive plants even lavenders. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you know what I think of every time I find that uh, black plastic bag when I'm digging? Where do you find that? Because we don't have any. Yeah, we do. We do. We do. Where is it? I know exactly where it is. Where the bodies are buried? No, I don't <laughs> bury them. Was there a septic system? Septic. 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 Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Remember in our last property when we moved in and we discovered the makeshift septic they were using? Yeah. That wasn't so nice. That's why whenever I find the black plastic bag when I'm mm-hmm. digging, I'm always mm-hmm. not happy. No. See, yeah. my thing would be like, ooh, dead body. No. And you're like, ooh, shit, literally. Yeah, literally. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next question. All right. Susan, I could use some good info and a good fertilizer for dragon fruit. Okay, I would say I'm not an expert growing dragon fruit. Both places work and at home, I just neglect it. And for the most part, it's fine. This year, because it was so cold, between the cold and the wet, we lost a lot of them at work. I even lost some branches off of mine. Now, dragon fruit, 
It is a true cactus. It's from South America. It's semi-epiphytic, meaning it could climb. It's climbing, basically. So it has a lot of aerial roots. We do plant it in soil, but it needs to be good draining soil. And you see them sometimes when they're trellised and they're huge or they're shaped into these trees and they're gorgeous. Even though it's cactus, it doesn't want blazing full sun in the Central Valley or in a really hot area. So for the most part, it needs just filtered shade in the summertime in a really hot, intense area. So cacti doesn't necessarily mean full sun. Let it climb, trellis it. Everything you see is stem. There's no leaf. So everywhere you prune, if you prune something off, it's going to branch off. Now, as far as the fruiting and flowering, so there's pretty easy to grow. The fruit from everything I've read and know is there's a lot of complications with it because sometimes you have a variety where it actually won't pollinate itself. It's um, self-incompatible. Even though the flowers are both male and female, it just won't pollinate itself. So it needs another variety growing at the same time and i.e. blooming at the same time for the pollinators to happen. And because they're cacti, cacti flowers, remember, are absolutely big and gorgeous and beautiful. They're very short-lived and this happens to be a night flowering cactus. So it's pollinate. So here's the thing is um, a lot of these, it's best that you take the pollen yourself and move it because if you really want fruit, you're relying on bats and moths to pollinate when these flowers are open and that's not always a guarantee. So it is good to take the pollen from one flower of a different plant and move it over to the female part of a different plant if you don't know if something's self-fertile or not. So hopefully you know the name of the plant. If you know the name or the variety of the plant, you should be able to look it up and see if you need a cross-pollinator. But from everything I know, it's there's not really even a chart. Like sometimes you you know fruit trees have charts of what's self-compatible, what's not. Um, so that's it. Once you, once you pollinate it, the more pollen, the better, of course. So, you know, just put on paintbrush and just smother that stigma with the pollen and then you're good to go. But it's the pollination, making sure that you just don't have one or making sure you don't have two of the same varieties that are not going to be pollinating themselves at all. And I think all this is, I, you know, um, there's a lot more information on dragon fruits because some people are getting really into it. A few students are getting really into it. And for me, it's a beautiful fruit, but man, it tastes boring as shit. Beautiful, but it's just not that tasty. It's like, blah, blah, but pretty. I should grow. I mean, I would like to grow one up bigger. We had a huge one at work. Not a huge one. I mean, huge ones, obviously, the ones that are trellis like trees, but we had a pretty good one growing and it just mushed out and turned yellow. Oh, and she wanted to know about fertilizer. Really, they're not heavy feeders as far as, um, you know, if you have in the ground, but if you have in a pot, yes, just an overall basic fertilizer, a 10, 10, 10. Uh, You might see a lot of yellowing coming out of this winter because it was one, it's cold. They're not growing. So they're not picking up nitrogen. Two, if it's in a pot and you had a lot of rain, it just leached that nitrogen out. Cold induced nitrogen deficiency. Um, So if it's not bouncing back, just give it a, 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 you know, a balanced fertilizer. I have no idea what dragon fruit is. I figured you didn't. I'm sure you've seen it. It's really bright colored when it's opened up. Hmm. But like I said, it's not that tasty. Yeah, no, no idea. Yeah. Okay, next question. Ready? Mm-hmm. Is there anything extra that I can do to help my tomato flowers set fruit from Mickey? Okay, so um, if you're concerned about not getting fruit set right now, don't be. It's, you know, as a plant's growing, the first few flowers, chances of them setting fruit, it's not going to happen. It's just young. It's not ready. Uh, So we're still right there. Of course, you know, with that said, if you plant it earlier in the season before April, you may be getting fruit already. Uh, But don't worry if you if you have flowers, even a few clusters of flowers, it's not setting fruit. I have few clusters and they're just not setting fruit. That's fine. It will. Don't worry. The only thing really to ensure of course, is to say you have flowers and you want to 
set them is, of course, shaking because the flowers have to be buzzed at a certain uh, frequency to release the pollen. Uh, so you could shake them. They have those little hand wands that you put up right against it. But, you know, a toothbrush, uh, electric toothbrush works. But just shaking them, the wind will do it. And that's really the only thing to ensure fruit fruit set basically there. You could take the pollen off and move it, but it's still you need that frequency to loosen the pollen a little bit. So that's why the shaking works the best. But I want to be too concerned at this point. Um, you, know, you don't want to give your tomato extra nitrogen either because that could stop it from producing flowers and just trigger more growth. Uh, the whole like phosphorus, the middle number in fertilizer is supposed to be the bloom set, like forming blooms, but rarely do you have like a phosphorus deficiency. And really, it, it's not like it's going to, you're going to give it and all of a sudden you're going to get more flowers. It works all together. So if you don't have a deficiency, it's not going to add more flowers, really. All right. All right. This next question is quite long. Okay. We might have to break it up into portions. Okay. Okay. All right. You stop me when you start to get to the point where you're not going to remember the rest. What? I remember everything. I have a question I hope you can help with. In my city, Stockton. Uh, yes. Yeah. South, south. Home of? Stockton's. Stock Brigade. What's the area code? Oh, DS-209. Yeah. Nick and Nate Diaz. Nick and Nate Diaz. Home of the Diaz brothers. Um, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Named our cat Diaz after. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. After Nate. In my city, Stockton, they are marking female trees to be removed. We have a male and female mulberry tree in the front of our house that is likely over 100 years old. The female is marked to be removed. What will this do to the male tree? Will it produce more pollen? Will it still produce the berries? which they do not like. She asked this question on an arborist page. One person gave a reply about it getting drunk. Hmm. There's a joke in there. I'm not getting I don't, I'm not getting it either. Yes. Oh, you I think the it's female, because... female is going to get drunk? Yeah. Yeah. I thought if you added females, you just drink more. I mean, I know, like... Yeah, I think the more appropriate answer is that mm -hmm. it's not going to get drunk. Yeah. And it's going to have a grand old time. Hey, shut up. <laughs> yes. It's going to be a very happy, solitary tree. It's going to be a short-lived tree. It's lived 100 years old and it's free. Okay. And it's lucky if it makes it to 100. <laughs> lucky if it makes it to 50. So we know that despite your incessant listening to murder podcasts, uh -huh. you would not be able to get away with it if for one second. Mm -hmm. Your primary suspect. Everybody yeah. knows. Yeah. Yeah. She's concerned about this. About me being a suspect in your murder? No. Oh, okay. About the female tree being okay. removed. There is a petition uh, going around to save the healthy trees. The city says it's concerned about the sidewalks, but she's seen lots of talk on the agenda against these female trees. So there's actually something called uh, botanical sexism or uh, botanical genocide about female trees. Boy, that seems a little <laughs> over the top. No. You, botanical no. genocide? Yeah. Yeah. Female trees. My God. I mean, yeah. well. I mean, I'm, think about it. No. I mean, hear me out. Shh. Shh. Um, Shh. Don't mansplain. Don't mansplain. That's not mansplain. <laughs> That's <laughs> I mean- Okay, so here, you have trees. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have Manisha's trees, meaning oh, they who, have... Who's Manisha? <laughs> it's a good name. Manish, <laughs> Manisha's trees, where they have male and female flowers on the same tree, or perfect flowers where they're male and female parts on the same tree. Then you have Daisha's trees, where there's there, a tree will only have male f flowers and a female tree will only have female flowers. And that's where the problems and the ones they're trying to remove are because the female flowers obviously are the ones that set fruit. What is fruit? Tends to be messy. So ginkgo trees, no one plants a female ginkgo trees because the fruit literally smells like vomit or poo. And so for years, people are like, oh, you can't plant ginkgos. 
no nurses, female ginkgos, so only males. Then you have other um, like pistache, Chinese pistache trees where the berries fall. So if you could have a female and if you have a male and a female, of course, most people are going to pick the male trees because they don't drop fruit, messy stuff. And so I see that's what they're doing with mulberries because they're dioecious. And these are, sound like they're not fruitless mulberries. Sounds like they are truly fruiting mulberries, which a lot of times, I mean, people want fruiting mulberries, but what happens sometimes if they are bird planted, we had a few bird planted ones where the fruits just weren't great. They weren't like the yummy mulberries, but they produced fruit. Uh, mulberry trees, then you have that extra added benefit of mulberries having more shallow roots. So they are not really the best street trees. After 100 years, how much damage, more damage is a tree going to occur, cause? Yeah, I would not remove a 100-year-old tree at all unless it, there was some safety issues with it. It was you know, going to fall or limbs were going to break off just to remove it, be saying, oh, it might affect sidewalks or it's messy. I, I can't agree with that. But yeah. So I can't, I, I don't understand removing a healthy tree at all that's been there for 20 years, you know, 50 years, just because there's some fruit. Uh, yes. Yes, Joe. Growth rate of trees over time. I assume it is not linear. I assume that it is relatively parabolic early in life. And then as they get older, it starts to heavily flatten out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So at a certain point, I would assume based on the age of the tree and the species of the tree, it's a pretty known quantity if it's going to grow much more or not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Does I mean, root growth tend to expand uh, as they age as opposed to above ground? Uh, you know, I can't say yes or no, but they could shift. It's almost this weird root shifting thing. So I could see where that could cause some issues with worrying about the sidewalks popping up. But I'm guessing if that tree is 100 years old and that sidewalk hasn't needed to be replaced like, you know, every five years, it, it's okay. What? Well... <laughs> Uh -huh. These hundred year old trees yeah. in Stockton. Yeah. I, I think there's probably some other issues in Stockton that need to be addressed before the hundred year old trees. Oh, I agree. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I'm going for. Yeah. So leave the trees. Leave the trees. Yes. Yeah. Don't spend the money on taking the trees out. Probably exactly. put it somewhere else. Exactly. And I think Nick and Nate are going to agree. I think so too. I mean, they grew up without even no, they might want the trees. They didn't have doors on their houses, remember? They might want the wood to <laughs> They want the trees. Yeah, they I'm want pretty the sure trees. they want the trees. Um Okay, her other question was the pollen. I already forgot the pollen. Oh, you forgot. Just, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's this going to do to the male tree? Will it produce more pollen? And then she says, will it still produce the berries? Now, based on what you just said, it's the female that produces the berries. Yeah. So you – okay. So you do have this weird thing – not weird thing, but – um, yeah, if you don't have a female, you don't even have, you have no, you have no fruit, nothing. So the males have the pollen. Males have the pollen, but so it's, there, there will be no fruit. There will be no fruit. So the males have the pollen. It's not like all of a sudden, oh, you got rid of the females and the male's going to create more pollen on its tree. No, the problem is, and I think she's alluding to this, is you're only planting male trees. And if you're planting male trees only, instead of having every other tree, producing pollen. You have every tree producing pollen. So your pollen count is going to be huge. But it really depends on... Uh, that's what you think she's asking? Yeah, I'm sure. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, so, of course... Really? Yeah. If, if you just have... Yeah, Joe, I'm sure that's, that's it. Okay. Well, yeah. she says still. Will it still produce pollen? I think she said, will it produce more pollen? I'm referring back to the article. Will it produce more pollen? You're right. Yes, thank you. Yep. Yes. Uh, no, so it's not going to produce more pollen, but you're going to have just only male trees. You're producing a lot more pollen out there. And remember, not all trees have heavy – the trees with the heavy pollen counts are the ones that, yeah, have the the insignificant flowers that aren't very showy. So, yes, mulberry is going to be wind dispersed, pines – oaks, all those that don't have showy flowers. Usually people see a flower and they're like, oh my God, so much pollen. It's like, no, 
No, because you you know it's it's going to be a insect pollinated, bird pollinated. Um, so yeah, it, it could be a problem with the amounts of pollen, and you know I wouldn't chop a tree down unless it was unhealthy or doing some major issues to uh, a building, and only if that building was old. If it's a new ugly building, I could just you know. <laughs> Um, but I think that was their questions, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That is it. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. Huh. You should stay up to date on the tree situation. Yeah, the breaking news Curious. tree. Maybe someone will go and maybe she'll go and uh, you know live up in the tree uh, if they're threatening to. Maybe we could get a camera, maybe a good day Sacramento out there and just film her. It's an update every day. Like, what are you doing in the tree today? What do they have to do from a policy standpoint to get that passed? Do they have to – there's just a presumption, I assume, that they've consulted some arborist that indicates that the sidewalks are at great risk and peril? Oh, or they just go at night when no one's awake and they chop it down. Well, I'm asking a serious <laughs> question. No, I, I mean, do. yeah, no, I, I imagine that's what they have to do. They have to, uh, one, have an arborist say the tree's not healthy. But I also think they could probably have... It doesn't sound like they're saying it's a health issue. Yeah. Well, I'm also thinking they could have someone out there who is in charge of any of the underground infrastructure. Oh, we have some pipes right here. We got some sewer lines right here. We got a sidewalk. We've got any of those, I'm right. sure. And if you work for the city, I'm not saying it's corrupt, but... Well, no, I'm not saying Stockton's corrupt at all or any... I'm not saying tree people are corrupt. <laughs> yeah, stop there. But yeah, if any of those are, yeah, it, yeah, I agree with you. It just seems like there's a lot more issues to be dealt with than in any city than removing healthy trees. Removing healthy trees. Yes. Yep. Especially mm. ones that are that old. That's sad. Yeah. You feel like that's pretty rare. Yeah. Typically. Yeah. Hmm. Man, what that tree is seen. I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So I think that's it. Remember, if you have a question, email me, Marlene, the plant lady at gmail.com. If you like this podcast, make sure to rate and review, give it a five star that just moves us up so more people could see it and follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Marlene, the plant lady. And I, we will be putting out more episodes for this uh, month um, and next month and August. I'm going to be gone most of September. Um, but yeah, for we'll, we'll get some more on. We'll do maybe an episode just specifically on tomatoes and get some people on. And if anyone wants a cat. Or 20. <laughs> or a cat. You, it's, it's adopt one, get one free, even though they're all free and all fixed. All cute, too. Been doing a lot of Bengal rescues. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So September now is uh, what it's looking like for your John Muir Trail? It's been that way. End of, okay. yeah, August 28th. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay, everyone. So until next time, happy gardening. <laughs>